Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video, we are gonna look at the Unova region and what a potential return to the Unova region could bring if Game Freak decides to take us in that direction this year with the next Pokemon game. Let's jump right into things. There's literally like 18 different directions that Game Freak could choose to go in when talking about a return to Unova. Let's push aside the idea of a straight remake for a second, whether they would hand that off to a secondary developer like Ilka, make it themselves and reinvent it in a certain way. Let's just pretend for the sake of this discussion that's not happening. So we are returning to the Unova region and we are returning with something brand new. So much of what we learned in Black and White and Black 2 and White 2 had to do with the history of the Unova region, learning about what Qrem originally was when it was together with Reshiram and Zekrom and it was the original dragon, learning about the two kings, the two princes who fought over the Unova region with the two dragons, the lore connecting Getsis and N and Team Plasma, where N came from, all of this could be explored in a Legends Unova game. If it is something like Legends Arceus and we return to the past, you can probably be rest assured in knowing that we're going to explore these themes in the game. But there are a variety of different ways that they could take it. One of the things that Legends Arceus did so well is that it changed the formula of what a Pokemon game is. You basically had a health bar. You could be killed. You could be sent back to Jubilee Village. Not only did your Pokemon have to engage in battle, but you had to engage with the elements of the world and with with the wild Pokemon of the world. This was a far cry from what Pokemon originally was, where your character was pretty much safe in every single regard. Sure, there were instances in many of the games where the villain of the game tried to kill you. Look no further than Black 2 and White 2 when Getsis attempts to use Qrem and destroy you with an icicle crash in the cavern only for N to show up and for your Pokemon to save you. But in this game, you are going to die. There are going to be wild Pokemon that kill you. This was brand new. If we get another Legends game, I think it's fair to think that there's a chance Game Freak adds brand new gameplay elements again, like they did in Legends Arceus. Now let's take the idea that Legends Unova is a game set in the past, in the medieval past of the Unova region. Kings and queens, castles, dragons, everything you hear about in history class when learning about the Middle Ages, both real and fantasy, will be in this game. What if in this game, Game Freak not only makes it an action adventure game, but adds in role playing elements. Pokemon is of course an RPG. It is a light RPG. It's, it's kids first RPG in many respects. But what if we get classes, side quests, armor upgrades, ways to explore a medieval caste system, things that you would typically see in fantasy video games, but instead we see it in a Pokemon game. It's not the action adventure survival that we see in Legends Arceus with this unexplored, untamed land of Hisui. This is an established world. Unova has a culture, Unova has a history. There are people that call it home. You can't just do the we're trekking out into the world and establishing everything for ourselves bit again. With a world and a region like Unova, you would have to do something a little bit different. So let's make it an RPG. Some of my favorite games of the last five years, namely Octopath Traveler, really, really lean into those RPG elements where not only are you learning the story of all the characters that you're playing with, but you're also getting to team them up, create different combinations, use it in combat. You have different skill trees of abilities and levels. Those types of elements could be added into a Pokemon game in this setting. The medieval setting would work perfectly. Maybe there is a village editor or a creator like in some medieval games. Think about in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. You are constantly building up Terrytown as a side quest, running around the region of Hyrule, bringing back different people, items, building up the town, and eventually it becomes a bustling town that when you play in the sequel is still there. Maybe there is a medieval version of this where they are establishing a new town in a region of Unova that is not yet explored. Maybe it is in the southwest, the part of the Unova region that we only saw in Black and White 2. Maybe in the lore of Unova, the rest of the continent and the land masses that it makes up were already established and this part of the Unova region only got explored and then established later on. 
Maybe you play a hand in exploring this area, establishing towns, bringing civ civilians from the mainland over, and building up these different establishments. You get references to the names of the towns that we eventually see in the Unova region in black and white too, and this is how they're established. Now before going any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another future upload. And check out the join tab, see if the perks interest you, and if you want to go the extra mile in supporting me, that is also always greatly appreciated. I talked about in my previous video with Pokemon Legends Johto that I don't necessarily think they're going to do the whole time travel thing again. I don't think it makes a ton of sense to say, if we have a Legends game and we want to connect it to the main line, these characters are coming from the present day, quote unquote, and they're being brought back, whether it's by Arceus in Legends Arceus or Celebi perhaps in a Legends Johto game. Just like with that video, here in a Legends Unova game, doesn't make much sense. I think you are a person of the time. Maybe there is some connection reference to the modern world in foreshadowing, certainly possible Game Freak does it in every game, but I think that you're going to be just a regular person in this world who is tasked with taking on a big challenge. Maybe you serve one of the two kings, one of the two princes of Unova who are fighting with each other for control of this region. Maybe you interact with Reshiram or Zekrom and you see the splitting of the original dragon. There are so many different ways that we could go about this. You are a member of the royal court and you are set out to explore an unmarked territory to the southwest. This could be the land of Black and White 2 where your character starts in. There are so many different things you could find. You could set up the Aspersia Village, which eventually becomes Aspersia City in the sequel games. These types of elements could be explored in much greater detail. Maybe there is a companion system in a Legends Unova game to continue to build off that RPG format. You run into characters who have lineage that can be traced to some of the larger figures of the original Unova game. Relatives and people, ancestors to Drayden, for example, ancestors to different major characters, to Juniper, and you get to add them to your party and explore the world with them. This is something that could really lean into that RPG element that fits so well in a medieval title, and I think would really differentiate Legends Unova from a game like Legends Arceus or from the modern regular Pokemon games, which are RPGs, as I've said before, but they're monster catching games, they're raiding games and multiplayer games. Pokemon really has transitioned them away from what a typical RPG, a JRPG is in the modern time since the games originally came out on the Game Boy Advance. So to introduce some of those elements again in a spin-off game that is still canon and mainline could be a way for them to pay homage to their roots while also innovating and adding new things that people have asked for in Pokemon games for a long time now. You've seen plenty of years of new generations come and go where people say, well, yeah, it's an RPG, you've got some light side quest elements, you've got some light role playing elements, but what if Game Freak one day leaned into it? Well, this is a game where you could really do it and really work with that canvas and that history of the Unova region that's already been established and really kind of mold it and mold the characters that you get to interact with. Not, able, not only ignoring the Pokemon, you could introduce armor, you could introduce buffs and items for your Pokemon that are fitting of this medieval motif. We already saw in Legends Arceus that they're not afraid to play with some of the mechanics of Pokemon battles and how Pokemon work in a party and building your roster and your team. They're not afraid to mess with this. So in a Legends Unova game, they could lean into this even more. They could mess with this setup to an even greater degree, adding in things that would play into that medieval motif. Armor weapons, things like that. We've seen Pokemon wear armor and weapons in the past. Now, granted, it was in a movie like Lucario in the Mystery of Mew, but we know that canonically you can justify it and say, well, we already know this exists for the most part in the Pokemon world. It could be something really intriguing, a really interesting way for Game Freak to take a Legends game and split it and give it its own identity from Legends Arceus. You're not following that formula too closely, but you're also giving fans a different experience that they enjoyed with Legends Arceus. It was a breath of fresh air, and you could do that before bringing us into the next generation in 2025. Those are some of my ideas. 
for a Legends Unova game, some of the fun ways I think they could mess with the Legends Arceus and core Pokemon formula, and some fun ways that would fit Unova well. What do you guys think of my ideas? I would love to hear yours as well in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it in the future, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you never miss any future content. I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.